from a 30-year coma. Now, as the late Wayne Dwyer used to say, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. See, we were given bodies to house this human experience. But many of us have abandoned our house with the belief that it is haunted. We see ghouls in the light and hear whispers in the dark and the boogeyman is waiting in the closet. Who wants to stay in a haunted house? I sure didn't. We are afraid of being haunted by the child that died there. Yet, we live with the vulnerability of an abandoned house. See, even if we continue to mow the lawn and water the grass on the outside, keep it manicured to give it that appearance that you live there, an empty house is high risk for vandals. Vandals come in the form of creepers who can't afford shelter, so they may camp out in your backyard, or some may break a window and sleep inside. <coughs> they may be superficial friends that we seem to attract, partners or con artists who are supposed to manage our business affairs but don't. They are outside of your abandoned house running amok, but you can't do anything about it because all you ever do is look through the window while you're watering the grass. And what about the pests that gather in your house while you were gone? Infestation of termites that eat through the foundation and leave unseen damage like high blood pressure and cholesterol, heavy menstrual cycles that cause anemia, erectile dysfunction, addiction, frequent headaches, and fatigue. Are you ready for restoration? Today, I invite you back into your abandoned house. You don't need to ring any doorbells or use a key. <laughs> you are still on the deed. No one's, no one's gonna own it. It's yours. For your spirit lives there <coughs> and is waiting for your return. You cannot master the art of healing while you are outside of your body. Now there are psychiatrists, psychologists, medical doctors, rehab counselors, self-help books, support groups, and all sorts of external aids. Unfortunately, to the degree that these aids foster or support your out-of-body experience, they will be ineffective. Now please understand that I'm not suggesting that these tools are not helpful, but I am suggesting that they are not enough. If you are using these resources and still experience regular fatigue, depression, fear of physical intimacy, patterns of addiction or self-harm, insomnia, or mysterious pain, you may be having an out-of-body experience, and not in a good way. Let me clarify what I mean to you by out-of-body. The out-of-body experience is a pattern of living that allows you to ignore or deny the effects of sexual abuse by emotionally distancing yourself from the physical body. Let me say that again. <laughs> the out-of-body experience is a pattern of living that allows you to ignore or deny the effects of sexual abuse by emotionally distancing yourself from your physical body. What happens to your body is separate from what you cling to in your mind. You choose to believe that the stories of your mind, you, you choose to believe the stories of your mind instead of the experiences of your body. The story of your mind might be that you are successful, even though your body is falling apart. The story of your mind might be that you are undesirable, even though you are physically beautiful. The story of your mind might be that you are helpless, even though you have a high functioning body. The story of your mind might be that you have no interest in sex, even though your body craves physical intimacy with your partner. See, there is a disconnect between the mind and the body.